Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. My name is uh, Hans van Doormolen. I'm working in the cultural heritage community. And I'm, uh, I'm teaching about imaging. And I'd like to tell you something about the work I done for, I've done for the National Library in the Netherlands. I wrote guidelines about what we call preservation imaging. And, um, so please pay attention. Um, it's about imaging. And, uh, oh, sorry. It's about imaging and, and the diff difficulties we have with imaging in the cultural heritage community if you are making pictures from paintings and uh, newspapers and stuff like that. So I, I wonder, do you see what I see? That, that's the topic. That's the name of the, the talk. When I take a look around in the world today, I see a lot of people running. And um, they're running away from war. And uh, they're leaving their homes and their families. And um, yeah, they're running away because of the war. That's very sad. And there is also a war going on against cultural heritage. And uh, there is a lot of destruction going on in, in cultural heritage. And if you uh, destroy cultural heritage, you can say that you're actually killing the soul of a nation. And um, therefore, I'm very glad that I was working for the National Library in the Netherlands to be able to write guidelines for preservation, for, for the preservation of cultural heritage. And um, yeah, I show you some images about it. The, this program is running for the preservation of paper heritage. Um, it's a large program. It's, it's carried out by four or five different vendors all over the Netherlands. And they work with all different kind of equipment. They work with, uh, with scanners, with cameras. And um, when you do not say how they, have to, uh, how they are going to digitize, you end up with an at random performance, an unpredictable performance. And um, when you go to, to Google, when you go on the internet and you do some research, and, and you go look for a painting you love, you, you see all different kind of colors. And, um, not only differences in colors, but also differences in, in the shape of the painting. And if you take a look at this image, you can wonder which, which one is correct. And, and how do you know? And, and how can you tell? And is there one correct? And, and are you able as well to see which color is correct, yes or no? And, and can you see actually the right color? And um, Actually, there doesn't exist anything as, as the correct color to see. Uh, I mean, the perception of color differs. It differs uh, depending on if you are angry or in love, or if, if, you, if you are hungry or early in the morning, you, you have a different color perception than later in the evening. So with this image, you cannot tell which one is correct. So what do you do? And, and here, this is a very nice example too. You see, you see differences in color, but also in content. Which, 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 which pipe was, was the real one? How do you know? I, I, I really like uh, the, this one too. Um, I used to have this record. Does anybody know which one is correct? I thought it was with peel slowly, but, but I'm not sure. So we, we are facing a problem here, and, and we are facing a problem of an at random performance uh, when, when you are going to scan works of art or making pictures from work of art. And I'm, I'm not a dart player, but, but you can think of playing darts. And w when I do some exercise, maybe I can end up with a little bit better performance than the first one over there. And, and if I'm able to to play dart a little bit better, I can say, okay, I have to aim there. And where you're aiming at, or, or what you want to achieve in the digital world, that's the most important thing um, in writing guidelines. Um, it depends on, on what, you're aiming with, at, uh, what you're aiming at and where you want to go for. 
and therefore take a look at those guys. I really feel connected to those guys. Those, were, uh, those guys were making a picture for the World Exhibition in Paris. That was around 1900. And they were making a picture from a big train, for a train. And they wanted to put a big picture from the train on the wall. But in those days, photographic enlargers didn't exist yet. So their only possible way to make a big picture was to build a big camera. This camera is called the Mammoth. And in this camera, there was a glass plate negative from one meter by one meter fifty. So it was also very heavy. They, I think they needed two or three guys to, to switch the glass plate negative. So this was a very ambitious project. And uh, that's the connection with this metamorphosis program. The metamorphosis program is very ambitious too. Um, what we want to achieve in the metamorphosis program, we want to make an image um, which looks as good as the original. That means that we do not see any loss of information. And we are going to do that because the, the, the originals they will fall apart because they suffer from autonomous decay. Well, we work according to guidelines. I showed you the guidelines. I did a long time research. I did research for about seven years. And in this research, I, um, I worked together with a lot of people worldwide. I worked together with the guys from the Metropolitan Museum. I worked together with uh, the Van Gogh here in Amsterdam, the Rijksmuseum. So we all work together in defining those standards. And, um, and there it was in 2012, we published it. So loss of information, it was also lessons learned what we saw in the microfilm industry when I came to work in the library in uh, 1999. I was totally shocked by the quality of what I saw. Uh, what I saw in the reading rooms, uh, in the reading rooms, in the microfilm reading rooms, that was only one twelfth of the original. And that means that 11 twelfth of the original was gone. That means that you cannot see any more what is going on there. If you take a look on the right side, you see you don't see the stamp anymore. It's totally gone. And the sad thing about that was that, it, that there was no necessary to, to lose all that information. It was only that there was no... Nobody paid attention to the tonal capture. And everything starts with correct tonal capture first. So this inspired me to, uh, to write the digitization guidelines. Here you can see some loss of information too. Nobody can read this anymore. So um, I told you earlier today that um, correct color perception is not possible. It depends on the hour of the day and if you are hungry, yes or no, stuff like that. But there is another thing going on. And, um, that is called uh, simultaneous contrast. Now, please take a look at this image. If you take a look at this image, and uh, you take a look at patch A, and you take a look at patch B, do you agree with me that, um, that patch A looks a little bit darker than patch B, or don't you agree? Yeah, do you agree? Now, take a close look. I select this patch B in Photoshop and I can put it there. You see what's happening? This is called simultaneous contrast. And I can take patch E and I can put it there, you see? They don't differ, they are, they are the same. I can do it backwards too. Nice, right? So what you have to do, you have to, to measure this. Um, your, your brain and your eye, they are both fooling you. So there is no way to tell if you have the correct color, yes or no. You have to analyze the file with software. And um, when you analyze the file, you can see that all the count values are the same. So uh, I'm always showing my calculator you have to use your calculator and you have the software. You have to use software. There it is, do not trust your eye. I, I, this was the screen there and there it is the calculator. 
So the guidelines, these are, this is an overview of the guidelines. Don't bother about uh, all the details, but I want to show you this image because there are a little, there's a lot of science in it. It's built on science. It's built on, on the eye, so you have to know how the eye is working. The eye is working uh, L-star, you can forget about that, but that's the formula. And this is the formula I used in all those tolerance levels. And everything is taken care of of the software and what we are doing, we use technical targets, targets like this, and we, we know how this target is behaving, so to speak, eh, the reflection values and everything, and we compare this to the, to the target we, uh, we digitize, and then we can see the differences. So that's, that's what we're doing here. Um, at the end, you can see artifacts we, that are unpredictable errors which now and then will show up. i show you some artifacts later. This is a very important slide too. It's really important because when you take a look at all this uh, stuff, all, all the things I wrote down in the guidelines, you have to walk a certain path. You, it, it's like building a wall or building a house, first this brick and then that brick. And otherwise it doesn't work. You see it's like building a house or a wall and every brick has to be solid and then you can go on. And everything starts with correct white balance, and correct tonal capture, uh, correct exposure and correct tonal capture. That's the game modulation. So if, if you work correct, you, you end up with um, with images like this, these are analyzed by the software and they are okay and then you can be happy. Um, but then there, number 12, this is the artifacts thing. So I show you, I'm going to show you some artifacts. When, when you do some research on Google again, you can search for Google errors. Uh, do you know that Google is carrying out a mass digitization project in the libraries worldwide? Well, then you can have some fun. If you go to the New Yorker on the internet and you can find some errors from Google. So this is an, a research a colleague of mine carried out in the National Library. He was working, uh, looking for a magazine which is called SMOD. And he was wondering, do I have to digitize it again, yes or no? And uh, this was the first page he found from SMOD. This is the second page. And this is the third page. Did you know this is the third page? This is the fourth page. This is the fifth, the sixth. So he was really glad that Google digitized this book already. Interesting, eh? all the different colors. I don't know how, I really don't know how they did this, but it looks great to me. Well, anyway, <laughs> it goes endless and endless. So the lesson we learned from this is that good digitization is, it's, it's like buying a car. And if you're going to buy a car, you know that the car, you need, you need wheels and you need some air in, in the tubes, you know, to go around. You need some doors to go in the car. You need a steering wheel and you need an engine, of course. And if you have everything like that, you can drive the car, right? But then everybody knows that you also need a driver license and you also need a little bit of understanding how everything works in traffic. Otherwise, you get hurt. And that's with digitization too, and making pictures. You have to be ambitious in your digitization project. You have to know, you have to train and skill yourself and your operators. And if that is okay, you can make beautiful images, which, which, which you can show with the world and you can store for long term in your, uh, in your Edipo. And you can enjoy uh, art. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.